you take a person with stage three colon cancer, so this person has cancer in their colon, it's even spread to the lymph nodes of the colon, but to the visible eye, it has spread no further and to, there's no radiographic evidence that it's anywhere else. You're going to put that patient on a fancy regimen of chemotherapy. I don't have to spell out full Fox and all that stuff, but there's a, there's a regimen of chemotherapy you'd put that patient on. How many of those patients are going to be alive in five years? 60, 70% of them? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, uh, again, it all depends on the size yeah, of the initial yeah. tumor and yeah. other features, but that's about right. Yeah. Yeah. Let's now take that same patient in a way, except he also has cancer that has spread to his liver. Yeah. So you're going to go ahead and cut the colon out, take those lymph nodes out, but on the CT scan, you're going to notice that he's also got metastatic cancer. So one of them is stage three, one of them is stage four. We're going to give that stage four patient the same chemotherapy. We're going to give them the same drugs. But in five years, somewhere between none and a few percent of those patients will yeah, be alive. Yeah, and if yeah. you wait to 10 years, it's none. Yeah. Yeah. What's a decent explanation for that observation? Which, by the way, if we had more time, we could tell the same story for every cancer, basically. Yeah, yeah. Like, in other words, what I refer to as microscopic residual disease, like why, why, why is it that we're actually able to eradicate microscopic residual disease with the same drugs that, that don't do the job um, when you have... Macro disease. <sighs> yeah. yeah right. like, well, in other say, words, why does yeah, it work yeah. when you have hundreds of millions or billions of cells not all clumped together but sort of diffuse, yeah. but when you have like 100 billion cells and they're yes, like in exactly. big yeah, visible yeah. clumps, the same yeah. drugs just fail? Yep. Yeah. So there's, 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 you know, I would say two prevailing explanations. Uh, there, are, there are hypotheses, I mean, frankly, because we, they're, they're, they'll become explanations once we actually, you know, connect the dots and really, you know, prove that we can, you know, demonstrate our knowledge by curing more patients with this. Um, so one is basically just a clonal heterogeneity concept. So basically, as cancers evolve, um, we used to think that cancer cells were kind of identical clones of one another, like that, like they're just like, you know, just a massive number of absolutely identical cells. Um, that, in the beginnings of cancer, that is largely true. Um, but as cancers continue to evolve um, in our bodies, uh, they actually keep mutating. Um, and so you start establishing subclones. I mean, and like you can have a dominant subclone, that's typically the case. Like that might even be, you know, 99% of the cells. Um, and then in that remaining 1%, you might have 10, 20 subclones. Um, we've like, proven now that, that certain therapies actually are able to pick off the 99%, they leave the 1%, or, and then somewhere in that 1% is a clone that has a resistance mutation, like already in it to the drug that we're giving. Um, so there's a clonal heterogeneity, you know, um, you know kind of, uh, hypothesis that I would say is, is quite strong at this point because of some of the evidence I just alluded to, that that's a big part of the problem. If you nip it in the bud, if you will, with offering the same therapy when there's not so much clonal heterogeneity, um, that's, that's, that represents a curative opportunity. And so when I was talking before about these um, so-called oncogene targeted therapies, which is not all of the targeted therapy successes we've had, but the ones that go after these mutated um, activated um, proteins, on you know, these growth factor receptors and downstream ones in particular, um, it's very clear that you can't, you can cure a trivial fraction of patients with overt metastatic disease, and you can cure a pretty substantial fraction of patients in the so-called adjuvant setting, so microscopic residual disease setting. And, and so, so we, we have direct evidence that this phenomenon occurs, but, but, uh, but you're asking the why question. It's, we think, some contribution or some part explanation from having to do with, you know, lack of clonal heterogeneity. The other is the secondary immune response concept, right? That basically all successful curative cancer therapies actually do trigger immune recognition um, through what's referred to as immunogenic cell death. So that you're killing the cells directly with your drugs, um, but that basically the, with the mop-up work, if you will, of actually eradicating every last single cell is, an, is the immune system's job. Um, it's a concept that was first um, introduced uh, with when we had just you know, these conventional chemotherapy drugs from the 1900s, um, and and now we actually have more and more evidence that our you know sort of more elegant molecular targeted drugs actually engender these types of you know like you know better immune system recognition phenomena um, as part of their mechanism of action, and and I, I and because we've de directly demonstrated that like better immune recognition in you know in patients who are receiving these therapies, looking at biopsies compared to 
uh, pretreatment and that that happens rather quickly. Um, you know, I think it's reasonable to then, you know, like overlay that on top and say, well, yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's, you, it's extending your spontaneous remission, you know, kind of um, starting point uh, from a while ago in discussion uh, that basically you, you're allowing this kind of tipping point phenomenon to occur. Yes, you're directly killing cells with these drugs. That's true. But the eradication piece, yeah. um, you know, is, is, uh, is ultimately an immune system. And, and I think there's kind of a hybrid there too, right, Keith, which is that in the, in the micro metastases environment, in the adjuvant setting, you have less capacity for the tumor to create the hostile environment in which yes. to yes. impair the immune system from mopping up the damage. So it's, it's all, it all favors keeping the cancer cell on its heals. And the way to do that is to just have as little of them as possible is going to increase our odds. You still That's have right. to win. You, I mean, you still have to yeah. kill because if you don't, it will get back onto its toes. Uh -huh.